Let's go to Nicole in Birmingham. Hey, Nicole, what's up? Hey, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. What's um, up? How so, can I help? So I was just, my question was, um, how do I have a relation, relationship with my dad if my mom won't let me? <laughs> so a little bit of backstory to that. Hold on, um, hold on, hold on. How old are you? Oh, I'm 21. Mom doesn't get but, a vote. Mom doesn't get a vote. I know. I don't care. Whatever you're about to say, I don't care. <laughs> Mom doesn't get a vote. It's more of I don't want to hurt her feelings you, type thing. She is choosing to have her feelings hurt if you choose to love your dad. Yes. And that's a um, choice that you can't manage. I know I'm cutting you off and I'm being rude. but I'm, You're I, fine. No. All of your story, and I want to hear it, but yes. you can't manage the emotional dysregulation of the adults in your life. You can only manage yours. Yes, sir. Okay. Don't say sir. We're the same age. Okay, go. So what's what, tell me the story. Um, so the backstory is my parents divorced when I was 13. Okay. I was a daddy's girl, of course. Um, Why'd they divorce? They kinda, um, it's, I really don't know the full true story. Neither one of them will tell me the true story. I think it was a little bit of cheating on both ends. Okay. Um, and... I just never got the full story since I was so young. Okay. Um, well, so they divorced and my dad stayed around for a while. Um, and then a year later, his family lives in Illinois. Mm -hmm. um, so he moved off to Illinois. Um, didn't tell me, just left. Didn't try to make a relationship with me or anything like that. Um, about six years later, he reached out and uh, my mom got pretty mad about it because he didn't pay like any child support. He didn't try to get in touch with me for six years. She was just kind of over it. Like, you don't need him. You're fine. Um, and so it's kind of been on and off for a while now between me and him. He'll try to make a relationship, and then he'll make excuses of why he hadn't gotten in contact with me. So that's why my mom's kind of like her feelings are hurt type thing. Mm -hmm. But I, me being 21, I'm maybe going to get married soon, have kids. I want my dad in my life. I just don't know how to do it or have the conversation with my mom without hurting her feelings. Gotcha. So why do you want this guy in your life? I, and, I, and, and, I, I, I can't wanna, decide. I want to read it out and to I, you, okay? Why yes. do you want this guy that abandoned the most basic responsibility, who yeah. figured out a way to untether himself from one of the most important loves of his life, being his daughter, who left without yeah. saying goodbye, who didn't even bother to make sure you had food on the table. Why do you yeah. want to re... And then now he's become um, kind of like a tornado dad. He hops in and then hops out and then hops in, creates a mess and then hops out and makes a bunch of promises and then doesn't keep them up. Why do you want to make a relationship with that guy? Yeah. Uh, and see, that's what I can't decide. I've, I've been back and forth between, you know what, screw that guy, I don't need him. I've made it this far without him, but then there's days and like weeks at a time where I'm like, dang, you know, I really wish I had a relationship with my dad. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, I guess. It's okay, hold on. Those are two separate things. So, <sighs> this is hard. Mm -hmm. Okay. This yeah. is hard. Um, you have a fantasy in your life about a father figure mm -hmm. that is different from what reality gave you. Because mm -hmm. the real dad in your life sucks. He's lame. He hasn't mm -hmm. shown up for you. Okay? And I would mm -hmm. say that if he was on the phone with me, I'd say that if he was sitting right here. Yeah. Everybody. I don't know a human being on the planet that doesn't have a picture of a relationship with their dad that they would love. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like you're chasing, like you have a picture of grandkids playing with granddad and wrestling around and going to the pool and learning how to whittle and all, whatever. And from what you've told me, that fantasy will not happen, will not come true. Mm -hmm. And so in many ways, your mom's right. You're setting yourself up for heartbreak again and again and again. Mm-hmm. And you're right. And so it's less about him and more about, man, I wish I had this. And that yeah. gap between what reality is and what I wish I had is grief. And it doesn't mm -hmm. sound like you've ever exhaled and said, because that's that line, I wrote it down. You don't need him. That's not your line. That's your mom's line. 
Yeah. That's what a scorned lover says. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll figure out a way to feed this kid. I'll figure out a way to love this kid and make sure she's got clothes and gets off to the prom. I'll make sure that um, she's has someone read her a story at night. I don't need you. But that's mm -hmm. not true about a little girl and her dad because you do need him. Mm -hmm. And he left you. Right? Yeah. yeah. And you're right about my mom. She, you know, stuck by my side and made sure mm -hmm. I had everything that I ever needed and would put herself in debt for me. And she has. So, but listen, um, that's not a, when a parent leaves you, that, oh, I want to say this in the right way. Your mom didn't go above and beyond. She did what was mm -hmm. right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's your dad mm -hmm. that went below. <laughs> you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. Now, being a single mom, holding it all together is heroic. It's, it's, it's almost impossible. I don't even know how you do that. I literally don't know how you do that. Yeah. Um, the friends of mine that have been single moms, they say, you just don't have another option. You just figure it out and you sleep, you wake up 10 years later and you know what I mean? Like it's, it's listening to them describe it is harrowing. So the effort in itself is heroic. But when you step back and say, man, my mom saved the day. No, your mom's supposed to provide food and shelter for the, her, da her daughter. And your dad mm -hmm. was supposed to be there too. And he left. Yeah. And I want you to exhale. <sighs> Yeah. Because he left because something was going on with him, not because of you. Yeah. And it sounds like you are still have this six-year-old or nine-year-old little girl in your heart trying to wonder what you did. And now maybe that I'm 21 and I'm going to have grandkids, now maybe yeah. he'll. Because you're still yeah. trying to fix what happened between the two of you and you didn't do it. He did. Yeah. Yeah, because the one thing that hurts my feelings the most is I am his only biological kid. And he went off to Illinois and got married and has stepkids and mm -hmm. does, he'll post, you know, on social media about mm -hmm. doing things with them and, you know, for them. And I'm like, I'm your only biological child and you want nothing to do with me. Like, yeah. I guess it's kind of a reminder. Like, I'm a reminder of my mom. And so maybe that's, I don't, I don't, that's not an excuse, but that may be what he's, you know, what he sees when he sees me as my mom and he don't like that. Yeah. I don't know. But it, either way, either way, I keep mm -hmm. trying to figure out, figure out that algorithm is a waste of your time mm -hmm. because you're a lovely person, Nicole. Yeah. And you were worth having your dad stick around and he didn't. Mm -hmm. Now back to the original thing. Yes. I do believe with all of my heart that people change. Mm -hmm. I've seen people who were miserable parents turn into good grandparents. Mm -hmm. And it takes an extraordinary amount of forgiveness. They have to forgive themselves. Their kids have to forgive them. And it takes an even more extraordinary decision to say, this isn't about us anymore. You blew that one. Mm -hmm. But you have a chance to redeem this with my grandkids. And I'm going right. to watch you like a hawk. Because mm -hmm. they're not getting hurt the way you hurt me. But if you step up, we can we can heal this generational mess, okay? Yeah. Because now we're playing a mm -hmm. long, we're playing a hundred year game. We're playing a two hundred year game now, okay? Yeah. The chances of that happening are very, very, very low. Mm -hmm. And you have to come in that with this isn't going to heal you. This isn't going to fix that hole in your heart. Okay. Okay. It's just not. Mm -hmm. Um, if he called you today and said, I screwed this up, I messed up, you were beautiful and perfect, and I left because I was a mess. I'm sorry. I'm going to make this thing right. And you look up a year or two later, and he's a totally different guy, which I've heard of happening. Um, you will walk around differently, okay? Yeah. In a good way. Mm -hmm. um, but it won't be what healed you. It's because that little nine-year-old girl will finally be let off the hook for trying to solve a problem that she didn't create. And so what I want you to do is I want you to let that nine-year-old girl off the hook now. Mm. Okay? And if your okay. dad comes around, your dad comes around. But it's going to be because he chose to, not because you did something different to woo him back. Okay. And you're an adult now. And if you want to make a relationship with him, your mom has a choice. She can choose to see this as, yes, my baby girl needs her dad. Come mm -hmm. hell or high water, she needs her dad. Yeah. And it's going to be painful and he hurt me and he might hurt her, but she's a grown-up and so on and so forth. Or 
she can act like a child and say, well, then if, I, if you don't like that, then I'm taking my ball and I'm going to go home. Yeah. And the temptation for you is to placate her because, well, she did all these things that moms are supposed to do and dads are supposed to do, which is feed and clothe and make sure kids are smiling, right? Yeah. And she's the quote unquote good parent. And so I've got to keep her happy. Yeah. That is not your job. Her job. Okay. It's her job to make her life filled with joy. She yeah. can be disappointed in you. She could say, man, that really makes me mad because that guy pisses me off, <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> she can get frustrated, yeah. all those things. But you get to make the choice. She doesn't get a vote because you're an adult, okay? okay? She can be, have, be, have wisdom and be like, nope, I've heard it all before. And you may find out conversations that have been going on behind closed doors for the last 15 years that you have no idea. Yeah. And, um, or not. Mm-hmm. Or maybe she, who knows, who knows? Here's the your homework assignment, okay? You ready? Okay, I'm ready. Homework assignment number one is that I want uh-huh. you to write a letter to nine-year-old Nicole. Okay. And I want you to let Nicole know that dad left and it's not her fault. She didn't do mm-hmm. anything wrong. Mm-hmm. Okay? Yes. Mm-hmm. Will you do that? I will. That can be, a, that can be that. a one-page letter. It can be a 10-page letter. I've written both to myself, okay? Okay. Mm-hmm. The second thing is, is I want you to take your mom out for breakfast or for lunch and just say, I want to learn more about my family. What actually happened? Would you talk to me about what happened? Okay. And now that you're an adult, I want you to have adult-sized conversations with your mom. And if she says, absolutely, I will not, say, cool. Because she's allowed to do that, right? And then you are an adult and you get to respond. You can throw a temper tantrum and say, but I deserve to know. <laughs> or you can say, okay, cool. If you don't want to invite me into that part, if you, if you don't want to let me into that part of your life and my family history, great. And you can do the same thing with your dad. Okay. You can reach out to him with boundaries and say, I want to meet you for lunch. And if he doesn't show up, then he's telling you where he is right now, not what you're, mm-hmm. what's, what you're about. Is that fair? That's fair. Yeah. Okay. When, when are you getting married? Um, well, <laughs> I just hope I get married soon. I'm in, I'm in a relationship of a year and a half. And Gross. Ro- Gross. Is he nice? <laughs> he is nice. He's very nice. He treats me very well. I've been listening to your show for about probably a month now, um, and I just listen to the way you talk about relationships, and he does check all a lot of the boxes. So, <laughs> Well, if you want me to give him a once-over, have him call the show, and we'll, uh, I will. I'll sit Kelly on him, and we'll find out real quick what this dude's made of. Yes, that It'll, sounds good. <laughs> dude, we should have that, Kelly, as a part of the show where we just grill potential mates. And I'll never say potential mate again because they're not kangaroos. <laughs> but we could, like, have potential, like, like someone's thinking about getting married. We should just come up with, like, a 20-point checklist and just get after them. I'm in. Yes. Oh, Kelly was all in. That would be so that fun. That would be an awesome part of the show. <laughs> um, I, I'll say it one more time for you and for people listening. Mm-hmm. I'm really sorry that your dad missed your life. Thank you. That should not have happened. Mm -hmm. And to the dads listening out there, don't miss your kids' lives. Don't miss your kids' lives. Because they're going to wake up and be 21, wondering still what they did. And then they're going to be reaching out and saying, I want to start my family. And I had this picture of what my family is going to look like. And because you did what you did, now I've got to redo all my pictures. And I have to grieve all this stuff, okay? Um, Mm -hmm. You're worth being loved, Nicole, and prom- ha- sit down with this cat that you're about to marry. Gross! And <laughs> make sure everybody's on the same page. Yes. If we're, mm-hmm. if we're doing this, we're doing this once, and we're doing this for right. life, and we're going to be mm-hmm. around for the kids. Yes. Is that definitely. fair? That's fair. All right. You are awesome, Nicole. Thank you so, so much for being brave, and thank you for the call. 